Hey gang, it's JC, and this is a special Super Bowl edition of the Daily Dose for Friday, February 4th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We have archives along the top of the page. We have eye candy along the bottom. We change that every day. Archives has some great old television history up there. It's a lot of fun. You can poke around and just have yourself a good old time. All right, well, we've got a bunch of things going on. You know, Michael Vick who uh, we'll get to here, I did the list the other day, he's no longer the most hated sports figure in America, and no, it's not Ben Roethlisberger replacing him. As a matter of fact, Ben didn't even make it on the top ten. I'll get to that in a minute. Michael Vick may not be at the Super Bowl, but he's at the Super Bowl. He's not playing, but he's having parties down there. He's throwing a party at a joint tonight called Du Lounge. The last time Michael Vick had a Super Bowl party, somebody was shot uh, guests will be wanded on the way in. Good idea. Uh, Fox has rejected a Christian-themed Super Bowl ad for the site lookup316.com, reportedly because it advanced specific religious beliefs. Game on. So we've got uh, the Black Eyed Peas doing the halftime show. you got Christina Aguilera doing the national anthem. And we have Leah Michelle from Glee. I sort of like this girl uh, singing America the Beautiful. I don't think they should be singing America the Beautiful. I, I think you should sing America the Beautiful or the National Anthem, one or the other. America the Beautiful should be the National Anthem of this country. But every time I say that, uh, people start threatening to Molotov cocktail my house. So maybe we'll just skip that this year. Uh, anyhow, and then uh, after the show, Katie Kirk takes another step to further her journalistic integrity and her great image that she already has when she guests on Glee. They're going to do a special post-Super Bowl edition of Glee, and Katie Couric is going to be on there, and I don't know what this woman is doing. You know, I watch the CBS Evening News every night, and people are surprised by that. You like Katie Couric? It's like, no, I frankly don't like Katie Couric at all. But I like the reporters and the reporting style and sort of the history of CBS News. So that's what I watch, and I just sort of tolerate Katie Couric. I'm not thinking we're going to have to tolerate her much long anyhow, because uh, her contract is up in a couple of months, and I will be very... Words cannot explain or express my shock if, uh, if they re-up with her. I just can't believe that. All right, so uh, we're going to a Super Bowl party on Sunday. I haven't been to a Super Bowl party in quite a few years. And uh, this is a list from Women's Health Magazine about five vegetarian Super Bowl foods that everybody will like. Now, the thing about it is, uh, at Christmas and New Year's and through the whole Super Bowl thing, you know, I just watch people stuffing themselves until they explode. I actually lost weight over the holidays about five years ago. It can be done. And I'm down a couple of pounds these days, and I'm trying to lose about five more, and then if I lose that five, then I try to lose another ten. I've been carrying around about 20 pounds I don't really need for about the last 20 years, and I am uh, I'm down to 179. That's the lightest sustained weight at 179 I've been at in over 25 years. So now, you know, when you start losing weight, you figure, well, if I lost five, I could lose another five, and I could lose five, I could lose ten, and then you start sort of going crazy. How did I do it, by the way? No, no John Brown shots in the stomach, no uh, magic elixirs, no uh, uh, taking a tablespoon of something before I go to bed at night. Um, what I've been doing is eating more sensibly, the snacks. It's really interesting. I eat uh, those little powdered sugar donuts almost every day. Um, but I only eat like two and I've been eating a lot of fruit. I just love fruit. And actually this time of the year, the oranges, I'm buying oranges the size of softballs right now, a dollar a piece at Schnucks and they are so good. They're so juicy. They're just fabulous. So you eat those, uh, really cutting down on my portions. That's a big, big deal. Cutting down on my portions. And then also having the flu for a couple of weeks helps. But the thing about getting the flu is you lose a few pounds and you're like, you get on the scale, you're like, wow. Well, see, now that's sort of like a, that's like getting a, a, like a little free card that says, all right, here's your head start. Here's your incentive 
to lose even more weight. And you just look at that scale and you can't believe it. It's like, well, you know, I feel pretty good and I even look a little better, but you know what? I'm going to really take this now and use it as a primer, basically. All right. So, and then you go from there. So no silly stuff. Anyhow, here's the five vegetarian Super Bowl foods that everybody is supposed to like. One, of course, is spinach artichoke dip. I mean, that's really, really good stuff. Uh, the only catch is it has cheese and usually mayo, which hardcore vegans won't eat, but I don't associate with hardcore vegans. Uh, number two, fried zucchini sticks with marinara sauce. It's not the healthiest way to eat vegetables, but it's better than eating cheese sticks. Meatless chili with avocados. Uh, you're going to make chili anyhow, so it's easy to do with a batch of just beans, and you throw in some chopped avocado and serve it on the side. And while you're at it, you can serve guacamole, and everybody loves that. Portobello burgers. You know, they're kind of regarded as a gourmet veggie burger, so, you know, you can do well there. And hummus. You know, I don't think I ate hummus until I was something like, you know, I was in my late 40s before I even knew what hummus was. And it's good stuff. You know, you go over to a Greek restaurant or something, they'll load up on the hummus for you. So, um, it's the uh, Super Bowl going to, ha uh, going to overtime? Maybe. You never know. I think this is an evenly matched game. And if they're going to have an overtime, this might be the year that it would happen. Do you know there's never been an overtime in the history of the Super Bowl? I'm going to be throwing some, some uh, fun facts at you here. And you can just uh, sort of quote these at your Super Bowl party. And everybody will think you just know everything in the world about football. And you'll just be going, I, I, I picked it up off the Daily Dose, you know. But um, if the Super Bowl does go to overtime, Papa John's is going to give a free pizza to every single American adult. Now, I'm trying to figure out how they're going to do that. To be eligible, you have to be registered for Papa John's Rewards Program before Super Bowl Sunday, which, of course, is Sunday. The registration is free, but they're going to probably send you a bunch of emails. But you might end up with some free pizza out of the deal. Uh, let's talk a little bit about all these myths surrounding the Super Bowl. First of all, everyone flushing the toilet at halftime. It doesn't cause sewer problems. It's at least uh, the, the, your sewage system in your community is not going to be overwhelmed if everybody does it. Domestic violence does not increase. This is one of those stories that surfaced about 20 years ago. Everybody started running with it. It is a myth. Uh, they say that the combination of drunkenness and disappointment if your team loses leads to an increase in men attacking their wives. Those stats have never been backed up. We don't eat half of the country's avocado supply on Super Bowl Sunday. That's another one of those myths. And it might cause heart attacks. There's a new study that came out that hasn't been debunked yet that the Super Bowl might lead to more heart attacks because you've been eating and you've been drinking and you get all excited and maybe even get disappointed and you've been shoveling snow and all that sort of stuff. Now... We're uh, having Joe Buck on the Friday edition of the showgram on the Big 550 KTRS. Trish Gazelle joins me uh, every day at 550 on your AM dial. And this is one of those things because we're going to have Joe Buck on the show on Friday. And Dallas is supposedly suffering a stripper shortage. Club owners estimate they there are about a thousand <laughs> about a thousand strippers short with all the extra demand for the Super Bowl. It's been so freaking cold down there. And again, you know, they keep revising that Super Bowl forecast. You know, originally they said, yeah, terrible week, wintry mix, temperatures in the 20s. People are down there. Everybody's mad. I mean, that DeMarco Farr thing is just mystifying everybody because anybody who knows DeMarco well, and I think I know him fairly well. I worked with him for three years on the show. I played charity softball games with him, call him every once in a while, you know, stuff like that. I invited him to my pool party and he didn't RSVP. He just never even showed up. DeMarco? But uh, that thing that they showed on TMZ, it's got everybody puzzled because that just doesn't seem like the guy we know. But everybody has their breaking point, okay? And he tried to explain it yesterday on his radio show. I don't know if he did or not. But uh, what point was I trying to make about that? Uh, DeMarco Farm, the Super Bowl. I've lost my place. Let's just move on. Uh, about one of every eight people say that they're only watching the Super Bowl for the commercials. Those people drive me crazy. So, uh, I, I got an eye candy you'll be interested in. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And by the way, Vegas, they will let you bet on anything. You can bet on the length of Christina Aguilera's national anthem. You can bet on what the first touchdown celebration will be. You can uh, bet on what Fergie will wear at halftime. You can even bet on how many current NFL players will be arrested over Super Bowl weekend. 
I'll have to get to that later. Uh, according to a new survey, Michael Vick, as we said, is not the most hated man in sports anymore. No, thanks to his um, fantastic performance this year, people seem to like him again. The guy, and you would think maybe Ben Roethlisberger, he's not even in the top ten. And it turns out it is Tiger Woods at four, and it is Al Davis, the owner of the Oakland A's. I mean, the guy has just abused his own team, has abused his fans, and people are just sick of him, basically. All right, in the average season, about 110 plays get reversed out of 310 reviews. That's about one in every three. That's a good Super Bowl fun fact. Throw that out there today. One in every three is reviewed. No, let's see. Fewer than 10%. I explained it. Okay, next. In an average game, there is a penalty approximately every nine plays. All right? It's easier to return a kickoff for a touchdown than a punt. One out of every 166 kicks gets taken to the house, but only one out of every 186 punts get returned for touchdowns. You're more likely to see a safety scored in an NFL game than a shutout. There are about 15 safeties in an average season, but only nine shutouts. And teams make a two-point conversion about once every 47 touchdowns. That's not a real good uh, percentage there, is it? And kickers make about 84%, or 6 out of every 7, field goals. These are stupid, aren't they? <laughs> but the one that, you know, you got to figure somebody's eventually going to start talking about a little more is this. This is the most amazing one of all. There are 26 players in the Super Bowl this year who weigh over 300 pounds. In 1980, there were only three 300-pounders in the entire NFL. And this year, there's 26 just making up the two squads who are playing in the Super Bowl. No human ho growth hormone there, huh? All right. Uh, JC's eye candy today. Everybody's concentrating on the commercials, uh, the promos, people wondering if they're going to do a, another Letterman one. I mean, that one got so much talk. The last two years, actually, the first one with Oprah and then the one with Oprah and Jay. Our eye candy today, the 50 worst commercials in Super Bowl history. So have fun with that one. You can see it right here on the eye candy feature. The, the 50 worst commercials in Super Bowl history. All right, enjoy the game. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Uh, that is the Daily Dose for Friday, February 4th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. Bye.